Alright, time to print the draftphysics.com, debatephysics.com also, but no rational debate, no reasonable arguments, nothing. No one really wants to talk about the evidence collected over the hundreds of years and what does the evidence really point to, blah, blah, blah. Nope. All just a bunch of goddamn shenanigans and nonsense. So anyway, a flat earther has showed up. For what reason? I have just no idea why they would bother. Um, and so um, it's really not worth anybody's time, right? I mean, you know, I could just show this. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Flat Earther, um, show me one shred of evidence indicating that this is a fake picture. You know, just any testimony from anybody that's ever worked for the National Aeronomics, uh, blah, 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 and all that stuff. Anybody who worked on the satellites, anybody, just any indication that this is a fake image. But you don't even have that. You have nothing, okay? There's no counter argument for anything. You're just liars. All right, time waste. You want me to show this image. You're just trying to waste human time for some reason. Some reason you want people to waste time responding to act absolute nonsense and that's all this is so um fuck you do it somewhere else okay so obviously flat earthers get plenty of attention they don't need me to debunk them there's plenty of people doing that so they're getting plenty of attention okay plenty of people are arguing with them so they really don't need this channel to you know waste its time <laughs> it is a waste of time so just fuck off i mean whatever the game is why don't you make a real video? Why don't you make a video? Get in front of the camera, show who you are, and make a real video about this if you give a, if you have any passion about it at all. You coward. Why don't you do that, coward? Oh, it's just so bad. All right, so fuck off. All right, Superior Mind has changed his icon, which I don't understand, but whatever. Uh, and uh, whatever. Yeah, he's just talking about her being uh, full of shit. And yes, that's what I pointed out in the video. All right, so this guy says the premise is false. So this is defending physics will make you sound stupid. So this is the idiot um, Gosling sticking a magnet to a metal cabinet and then saying the magnet's not doing any work. The premise is false. Conventional physics does not claim the force is equivalent to energy. It doesn't matter. So well, what do you think the video is about? It's about a magnet sticking to a cabinet, and the argument is, is it a force or not? He's saying it's not a force, and it doesn't do work. Clearly, it does work. Okay, when a force is applied to an object and work is done, energy can be transferred to the object, or not transferred. <laughs> you know, just depends, right? That's the whole argument, is that the transfers are not necessarily happen. So again, a ball bearing bouncing 200 times on an anvil, is the energy being transferred to the anvil? Is twice the energy on every single bounce going into the anvil? Well, it's not moving, so there's no evidence the energy is being transferred. Uh, so, I mean, fuck you. I mean, whatever. This isn't an argument. Um, this energy transfer occurs when the force causes the object to move or undergo displacement. So again, you're still talking about distance as this I should worry about the distance when well I have to worry about what the force is how long was the force applied it's about the pressure not anything called displacement and clearly the 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 the, <laughs> the, the magnet stuck to the cabinet is a clear example it's clearly a constant force over time and there is no displacement technically, right? I mean, the magnets aren't moving at all towards each other. They're stuck. They got material between them. There's no displacement, but they're doing constant work because there's a constant pressure. So I put a piece of paper between the two magnets. The paper over time will get thinner and thinner because it's going to get squished by the force. So it's clearly about time. You're not countering that argument. You're an idiot. The work done by the force is equal to the energy transferred to the object. So again, no, it isn't. There's no transfer of anything, okay, to anything but the, say, whatever's in the middle. All right. So, all right, so uh, 
Basin Bass says, your physics says if I hold a 50 pound weight against gravity, I'm not doing any work since the weight isn't moving a distance. How can that be rationalized? Of course, you won't get a, an answer of any kind uh, because it's just a fact that it is doing work. A piece of steel holding a, you know, I put a compressed spring between, you know, a tuning fork. The spring is doing constant work. It's just a fact it's working, it's, putting pre it's creating pressure. And the fact is the pressure has to be going somewhere and it's just counter pressure. That is the steel is doing the, the vibrating thing. It's the only rational choice. It's the only possibility is that whatever, whatever pressure is being applied, it's being countered by a counter pressure. The spring is being forced to stay compressed by a counter pressure. So both objects are still doing they're still applying force, but they're not able to transfer it. They're not able to turn it into heat or to turn it into any kind of, of escaping energy. No energy is escaping. <sighs> Nothing's moving, so the energy can't escape. That's a simple argument. Nothing's moving in a non-counterproductive um, <laughs> direction that is it's doing this the movement never leaves all right okay i used to watch some of veritasian videos um but i just quit after seeing that U u.s idea weapon video so this was the steels rods from god video which is kind of silly it just straight up stupid how could you possibly not simulate the idea before actually trying it and if he actually a f a physician i don't know what that is physician i don't know with a phd how could he possibly do the idea without d doubting it and calculate whether the results will benefit him or not and in the video he initially showed that he did not know most falling objects tend to rotate to whatever face is the most air resistant. Yeah, they tend to unfortunately not be perfectly balanced, and so they they end up on a, a <laughs> they end up stuck on the wider surface because they can oscillate on it. They can't oscillate on this surface. Meanwhile, it's something even high schoolers who majors in math here not even physics could figure out when we're a fucking developing country i realize that he treats his viewers like a bunch of dumb primary school students um well the problem the, the rides for god thing from god isn't destroyed by the fact that they wobble because you can basically you know spin them rotate them do something to cause them not to uh, seeing how stupidly long his videos are for something stupidly simple. Whatever, they're just too showy, Is that's the real argument. So he ought to just point out how, well, it's too expensive to put big heavy things in space, so there's no point. And then by the time they get to the Earth, they've, they've been degraded by heat. So if you have any kind of velocity, the heat has degraded any kind of motion you're going to get out of them anyway, so forget it. Um, you know, the whole terminal velocity thing is just going to get in your way also. It's hard to get any more anti-scientific <clears throat> than training people to use made-up stereotypes to identify uh, heuristics to sling mud at. Consequently, everyone who isn't part of the club gets lumped into, lumped in with the loons. Well, everybody attempts to do this, you know, they, they and, you know, it's some of it's legitimate, you know, you could argue that, um, oh, I don't know, affiliations, right? I mean, you're, you know, if, you, if you're part of a club that, uh, you know, is uh, chauvinistic or racist or something, I mean, that's to your detriment, you know, so there's some associations you're just stuck with. And the fact is, is that all dissidents get... Uh, are unfortunately suspect, okay, by the low probability that they have anything rational to say because there's so many who don't have anything rational to say. So it's just a liability. You know, I mean, you have to live with it. It's not, you know, but the fact is, is that 
you can tell the difference. If they offer to pay you for your time, well, then you're not losing anything, right? If somebody wants to pay me to argue with a flat earther, I'll do it. You know, I have no resistance. Um, they don't have to pay me much. <laughs> you know, 10 bucks, you know. Anyway, dogma or get labeled and this <clears throat> thus arrested development whenever they're they break physics. So yes, the dissident community ought to pay physicists. They ought to offer them money. Okay, and then everybody could just show, well, look, I mean, we offered them 100 bucks, and they wouldn't answer the questions. And then we offered them 200 and they wouldn't answer the questions. And maybe they'll get up to 4000 which I offered. Um, and we can all just show how, obviously, they're running away from the questions, right? Because, you know, we're going to pay them for their time. So they're not going to lose anything by responding to us. This isn't some sort of thing where I can't, oh, we can't possibly handle the... No, you're getting paid. It's a job. So instead of having commercials on your video, why don't you just solicit people to pay, okay, a sponsorship fee uh, for you to talk about what they think is interesting. The math is every bit as much <coughs> religion in some instances. I can manipulate math to prove all kinds of nonsense. Well, clearly you can decide to change equations and you know and say, okay, I'm going to convert it into its rudimentary form, and that's what they do with the mv squared thing. You know, the whole idea that they turn velocity into a distance over time. When that's not what a velocity is. I mean, that's not what it is in its actual function. In its function, it's just a, a length of line in a direction. It's not a distance over a time. It's a line in a direction. Okay. I actually knew a partially gifted, particularly gifted, self-proclaimed uh, manipulator who bragged to me that in private about creating software to show visualizations of multidimensional reality and such, he finds it intriguing and amusing how many people blindly fall for it. Well, the whole blender images, you know, people fall for the stupid donut fake image, you know. <laughs> the 17 months to make image. Possibly, because, you know, the thing that isn't an image, it isn't a photograph. Possibly because they don't want to look stupid, but ironically do. Okay. And our entire argument can be summed up as um, be a believer or be branded a heretic. Yes, you know, be a pepper or we'll really insult you. Yet they're the ones with the flat earth theory in numerous instances, the unevidence theory, right? The not really sewn up in tight evidence theory. You know, it's very loose, <laughs> you know, um, ugly even as evidence. Uh, you know, why, <laughs> why did you do that? It's totally unnecessary. This stuff on my desk is always <sighs> begging for attention. Uh, so I'm back. Okay. Oh yes, yeah, so this is superior mind again. Uh, so I don't know why they brought he brought up uh, you know the Mike Mickelson Morley experiment. Frankly, this is not a good example of anything. Explaining yours, gravity is bent space nothing while also sitting MM experiment to show there's no ether. I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know why you would defend the idea that there is an ether, so whatever to that. Glue on strong force like they're brainwashed, but uh, they'll never see it. Uh, well, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You kind of lost me at Mickelson Morley. <laughs> Sorry. No, no sale, frankly. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So this is the flat earther, so what the fuck? Uh, so here he says, here's an experiment. Next time you have soup, uh, turn the bowl upside down, then pour the soup. So he's trying to argue there's no gravity because somehow gravity can't happen on a round surface or something. It's just a, I've made so many videos that's just insulting, frankly, the channel not to directly argue my arguments. So if you're not going to directly argue what I argue uh, for the creation of gravity and explain how there's something I've said about gravity that you think you can prove incorrect, then you're just wasting my time. And uh, it's unfortunate when you block somebody, all of these stupid comments don't just disappear. I have no interest, okay? Flat Earth is not an interesting theory. All right. <laughs> the energy is needed to accelerate a motor. So this guy's arguing with the 
the idea that, uh, you know, 25 times the fuel to go five times as fast. And, uh, you know, 100 times the fuel to go 10 times as fast, frankly. The energy is needed to accelerate the motor. So why don't you prove that? Show me an experiment where they start from zero and they get the motor going five times as fast or they get the motor going one time as fast, you know, one revolution per second to five revolutions per second and show that it's 25 times more energy. So saying it is just bullshit. Putting it in capitals doesn't certainly prove your point. How do you prove that it takes 25 times the electricity to accelerate the motor? Where did you, where did you prove that? All right. Um, in constant motion, fuel is consumed only because of friction losses. Yeah, and so you would assume that there's more friction at the higher speed, blah, 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 blah. However you want to figure it, air resistance, all of those things do increase. And air resistance becomes significant because that one actually does increase as you go faster because you end up creating the terminal velocity problem. You create turbulence and all kinds of other stuff that really is a burden to your progress. Uh, and that's not the point. Uh, the question is, if I started stationary, how much fuel I need to reach f five velocity in comparison to one velocity? Yeah, so wh where's your evidence? You don't have anything here. You're just saying that I say it's uh, 25 times the fuel. You saying so means nothing. Okay. This is something a normal 15-year-old could understand. What, what was it, what's about understanding? You're supposed to produce evidence, fucktard. So I don't know, it's this fake 10 fake thumbs up. So I mean, you, you people, you lose so much credibility, you know. Uh, it's just so ridiculous an argument. So you have zero evidence, okay? You're not gonna show me any evidence that this happens, and you're certainly not gonna show me where a car going five times as fast as 25 times the fender damage. So none of that's gonna show up. Uh, you know, and then you're talking about what a 15-year-old knows. A 15-year-old should know that you need evidence if you're going to make an assertion. You're making all these assertions and claims, and you don't have any physical evidence to prove any of it. So, waste of time. All right. Thanks, man. Somebody who is uh, standing against woo-woo. Okay, I don't really anti-woo-woo. Uh, I just, I really hate all of these trolls on the, I mean, all these fakers, all this sock account crap. I mean, can't any of you have real accounts? Ugh. I'm really, you know, <laughs> you know, unaccountable commentary is just so meaningless. Put a face to it or just fuck you. That's, that's my opinion, right? If you don't have the courage to put your face on what you're saying, yeah, fuck you. I mean, I'm sorry, that goes for a lot of people who are agreeable with me, but I'm just saying that, I, you know, it's just it's just a point that, you know, this anonymous coward crap is just such a degrade of the Internet. It just breaks its function when people don't have to be accountable for what they say. Is there an experiment that you could do to prove the slit test wrong? Okay, so I did, I responded to this guy with a whole bunch of crap about radar and all this other crap, so we're not going to go over that all again. These are all arguments I've made hundreds of times. Well, he makes that sound good, so, you know, these are the kind of statements by people. What, what's the point of it? Oh, I agree completely. Oh, who cares? Oh, I disagree completely. Oh, who cares? Yeah. All right, so another guy I, re I did respond to, so I won't bother reading it. Um, old Times Physics. So this was a good link. So a guy has a the channel. I guess we'll go to it just so in case one of you people are interested. <coughs> so it has a bunch of these 1950s and 60s videos. And so the channel's called Periscope Films. Film, Periscope Film. And, uh, you know, they're all there, which is nice. A lot of them are there, you know, a lot of them. All right, so um, that's good. That's a positive thing. All right, and then Elizabeth, uh, you know, she just keeps... Uh, well, well, they say, and uh, well, are you really saying, are, you know, they, 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 they. Yeah, that's right. They make lots of claims. You have to decide for yourself how, how much you're going to believe them, okay? So if they tell you, 
okay, uh, oh, they did the two slit experiment, and then you find out they didn't do it. And then they talk about a detector experiment, and it doesn't exist. Well, then you have to get to some point where you realize you can't take anything they say too seriously because they exaggerate and distort at a minimum. And at, at the reality, they just overtly lie about the evidence. All right. Let's see. I originally just saw the original short back before this one. So, yeah, one of my shorts, you know, and the shorts are getting, you know, trashed by YouTube now. You know, they're just, they're just not going to let them be seen uh, so it is a little disappointing uh, let's see fun fact Wikipedia would rather have 15 videos calling them retarded yeah well it's going to be 30 videos ultimately but anyway checkmate uh, physicists how can one half plus one half be four I don't know what that is one HLV hell vote I don't know hell vote Volt. <laughs> I don't know what that even means. Rewrite the textbook. So who knows what kind of, you know, it's just more troll behavior. Uh, is is that a battery? You are weighing a battery. Uh, why would that be miraculous? I just, you know, people are just so weird. All right. I, you know, I really don't get you people. All right. So this, yeah, so this is the most recent short. And so this is the kind of funny thing that YouTube posts, right? Um, what the hell is that? Anyway, um, nice. This short got 56 views. That's similar to the 30 to 210 you usually get. <laughs> so, I mean, look at this range, 30 to 210. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's just like 30 to 210. It's like 10. And, you know, it's almost like their V squared thing. It's just hilarious. Um, you know, so the videos were getting an average of 400 views, and now they're getting, you know, whatever, 80 views or something as the average of the last three. So they've clearly degraded the functionality, and they just make up numbers. You know, I had I had reach numbers on the video yesterday that were really good, um, like 70. 75% retention. That is only 25% of people were swiping away, as they put it. See, they, they give you this little swiping number. Now, they're claiming this video got swiped away 53% of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I don't know how somebody could possibly tell the difference between the videos. I mean, the icons are almost identical. Uh, how is that really possible? Yeah, it's not really possible. So, you know, they just make this shit up, frankly. Uh, it's, you know, YouTube sucks, as I have always and will continue to point out. What a shitty company Google is. Just such an evil, horrible, awful blight on the Internet. Anyway. All right, so I guess we will move along to maybe some website comments, but they're just terrible useless mush and then maybe gosling and and uh, that disbar asshole so i'll do the gosling guy since i'm right here so he made a short and you know i've asked him not to email me and he did it anyway so i'm just telling him one more that's it i'll give you one more chance you email me about something totally uninteresting and stupid and this was stupid right he emails me to link me to a short where he claims he can't understand my argument about the spaceship, that he thinks what I was arguing. Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is what he's saying. I mean, it's so bad. I mean, it's just he hasn't dealt with the fundamental argument. Instead, he's w trying to weasel out on what you could only call is, you know, almost ridiculous semantics. You know, I mean, it's so, it's such a, uh, oh, I'll try to get out of the argument through the most idiotic of technicalities. Uh, and it's just so bad. So he's almost he's arguing that somehow, because I, you know, in, in in my five minute video I did say, okay, what if you shot the gun internally, and you know the bullet hits one side and the recoiling gun hits the other side, right? And that would obviously be okay. You know, two joules of energy hits this side, two thousand joules of energy hits this side, okay. And then I said, well, you know, and then what if we release it? Okay, and I clearly wasn't saying, well, uh, you know, let it happen, <laughs> you know, like have, you have a tube inside the, the spaceship, you know, a hollow tube, and then 
shoot the <laughs> shoot it out this way, <laughs> shoot it out this way, because obviously the spaceship wouldn't move. That would be the same as the gun being out here, you know, and the bullet being out here, and I just watch it. Well, obviously watching it won't move the spaceship. So clearly I was saying you, you know, first, you know, leave the collect the bullet into the ship and let the gun fly out and then you leave the gun in the ship and let the bullet fly out and those two things will have this huge disproportion two joules and two thousand joules and the argument is the spaceship doesn't turn so instead of dealing with the fact that momentum works in space and kinetic energy shows no capacity to move anything it doesn't work at all so momentum works as thrust but kinetic energy doesn't work as thrust. It can't move a spaceship in space. The kinetic energy theory will not move matter in space. Okay, so that's the real point of the video. So he's just trying to get out with this stupid catch. I mean, such a silly, stupid catch. Like somehow he didn't understand. Um, you know, the argument is that uh, you're just basically throwing a certain amount of watts of of propelled mass, okay, a propelled mass in two directions, and you're doing it with a small object with a high velocity and then a big object with a low velocity. And um, seeing if there's any um, correlation, that, and is there any indication that this stupid kinetic energy theory makes a difference, and it doesn't. Uh, okay, so, you know, such a cat, you know, so he's basically just saying that because I didn't make it crystal clear that yes you have to attach you know you either you have to throw like you could have a spring to throw the gun right because that's low velocity so that's easy you could just use a spring to throw the gun with the two joules of energy because that's really easy to do moving big things slowly is easy moving little things fast is harder work so you'd have to use the gun to do that but clearly it doesn't work <coughs> and, and it shows that kinetic energy is impotent in space it has no meaning no value it won't make matter move in space that's the fundamental argument it just evades it i mean it's just disgusting he completely evades the fundamental argument and then plays some silly game like he didn't understand like somehow he was actually confused that i was saying no you just watch a gun and a bullet in space <laughs> you know it's not tied to your ship in some way when of course it is I mean, I didn't think you were this stupid. So again, it's because he's, he's saying, look, you know, you have to apply the Barman rule. You know, you, you've got to recognize that you can fool all of us morons all of the time because we are so simplistic and stupid. So you have to make your videos more perfect because we can't be assumed to have any reasoning skills or logic skills at all. I have to assume the audience is pathetically stupid. Yeah, but it's okay. I'll remake the video. To just make it certain that, oh, yes, it happens inside the ship. It's attached to the ship. Yeah. Oh, just amazing bullshit. But he e emails me for something that stupid. And you're just like, what? You, you are retarded. That's all you can. Yeah. So I did um, re-upload the video where he has the magnet stuck on the wall because that didn't get many views. So it did get more views this second time around so it got like a hundred so it did a little better all right since i have the blackboard here the whiteboard um we'll do the despair so i watched part of despair made some video look and okay honestly you know if i could tolerate him as a human i just can't he's such a lying scumbag i just can't stand him um listening to him but at least he did make uh, a drawing and explain something. Okay, and, but you know, the explanation is a silly premise. So he's arguing that a system is any system. Like I can put four things in a system and they don't have to be gravitationally t tied to each other. And somehow he's just going to say, this is a system with a center of mass here. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do the center of mass. And, like somehow it has a center of gravity, even though None of these objects are attached to each other in any way whatsoever. So there is no gravity between them. There's no magnetic or electrical forces. And yet he's going to call it a system with a center of mass. Now, obviously it isn't. So when they're talking about a system, you're talking about some sort of like oscillator where you have a mass, a spring, okay, a mass, a spring, and a mass. This is a system because everything's tied to each other. So that is kind of a system 
has to obey certain rules about its center of mass moving at a constant velocity. This is not that system. So in the case where you're just saying, I'm going to have three objects, A, B, and C, all right, and the, what you're really saying is, is what's this thing do if it was in a system? That is, if it was a balloon, okay? And these are the three objects you had in the balloon. Now, the fact is, is they're going to reach an equilibrium in terms of their motion. So say this had a vector this way, this one had a vector this way, and this one had a vector this way, okay? And that's what they were this moment. Over time, that moment would always be the same. So there would be a place where you could argue that this is the center of mass at any one time. So this is like a complex lever, you know, where you can have a, a complex pendulum, you know, where it's, where it's hinged. You have a hinge here, and then you have a piece, and then you have another piece here. The fact is, again, that's a system tied together, and the fact is it has a center of mass. Uh, anyway, so then you could argue that this whole balloon will move in space uh, in some direction. So it has a direction. The direction could be this is its final vector. All right, if you add all this together, you end up with a vector and a direction because this bounces, it bounces back, it bounces, it bounces back, it bounces, it bounces back. Now, if it hits each other, the fact is, is that the momentum is conserved and you still have a conservation of direction in that case. So you're not going to be able to change its direction. So nothing you can do in here will change what will hit here and what will hit here and what will hit here over time. So over time, it's going to do something consistent. And if I added to the system, that is, I put another, I introduced, like Newton, I introduced a new object into the system, okay, with a new vector, that new vector will create a permanent change in its equilibrium. And now this thing will move in a new direction because I added energy in a direction. And the direction will be conserved because of this fact, because I created this rubber wall, okay, that makes everything have to reflect, okay? So it has to stay in the system. Nothing can leave the system. Nothing can enter the system. Therefore, the system will stay this way. Now, if I hit the balloon from the outside, obviously I can make it move in a new direction because I'll change the direction of these things. They'll hit the surface when I'm hitting it. I'll change when they hit it and how they hit it and with what force they hit it and with what momentum they hit it. So I'll change the direction of the object. But, <clears throat> and so you can't do your subtraction vector crap. So again, his argument is, is if I bang something into something else, okay, <laughs> something stationary, all right. What happens? Well, the momentum is transferred and the stationary thing moves and the thing that was moving stops, right? That's what's going to happen. Well, his argument is somehow, okay, that if I if I bang it into something bigger, that what I'll do is somehow I'll put energy into the bigger thing, okay? <laughs> that and uh, you know, somehow I'll have a reflection that will be um, that'll end up creating the same motion in this direction. That is, my reflection will be the same as the extra energy I created in this direction. But I couldn't create extra momentum in this direction. I can only make this much energy. I can't make any more momentum. I can only give it what I have. If I have $10, I give it the $10. I can't give it $15 and then bounce back. So their theory is, is that every time something reflects and the other body doesn't move, I mean, it doesn't move and you know doesn't m dm it doesn't move okay and the object reflects they're saying that this object actually has momentum in it even though it didn't move well if it didn't move how could it possibly have momentum it doesn't make any sense if it yields then i don't get a reflection and and that's the truth of it so the energy didn't go into it it just bounced off and eventually it'll bounce off the outside of the universe and bounce back in again and try again and then it'll bounce off and bounce back and forth and there's no it can't absorb the energy the energy isn't absorbed by the object if the object doesn't move i mean it's so fucking obvious if it doesn't move it's not absorbed energy <sighs> no but the whole idea that you can have both you can put the energy into the object i can hit something i can make it move with the energy i had like a Newton's cradle, bang, bang, and I can go this way. 
No, I can't do both. I can't make this go and I can't have a reflection then. I can't give this thing energy and then keep the energy and have a reflection. I can't do that. It doesn't happen in physical reality. All right, enough of that crap. All right, should be back. All right, so this is the website crap. All right, graph physics, do you look at data? So what does that even mean? So do you look at data? So what data do you have showing that it takes 100 times the fuel to go 10 times as fast? To spin a motor 10 times as fast takes 100 times the wattage. Um, say if you're, you have a turbine uh, and you're going to spin the turbine from the water in a dam. You're saying that every time you rotate the turbine twice as fast, you create four times the electricity. Um, <laughs> you know, you know uh, do you have any evidence that that actually happens? Do you have any data demonstrating that twice the rotation in the water wheel is four times the power or energy? Any data at all? No, you don't have any data. All right. <clears throat> V comment con conjures up the Monty Python bit in more ways than one. I'm looking for an argument. Oh no, this is abuse. You know. Yeah, so everything can be reduced to this, right? So every time, oh, you can do the face palm from like, it's like a Thunderfoot video. You know, he just steals little clips from movies, you know, and so you have Picard doing his face palm, or you can have Homer Simpson doing do. Or, you know, you can have uh, South Park doing, you know, respect my authority. Uh, yeah, you can, you know. Oh, great argument. Yes, you really destroyed me with that fantastic argument. You're just like a flat earther. You're just like a fucktard with a, you know, electronic dildo up your ass. All right. Uh, I like that you think an argument is talking to a screen. Let's see. So anybody who counters something, so writing in a on a piece of paper is an argument, right? So we could go back to De Chardelet. She made an argument where somebody published something and then she published her own pamphlet countering the argument. <laughs> oh, what a silly thing to do, right? Oh. I mean, these are amazingly, insipidly stupid arguments. I mean, I just don't know why you waste your time. And frankly, there's a point where I'll just block your IP, okay? If, you're not, if you can't do better than this, all right, I'm not going to be bothered. You have to actually make some kind of physics argument here. Hey, if you don't know how to say the word, you can type that word into YouTube. Do I care? Is this really important if I pronounce 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 wrong I call it pronounce does it make is, is it going to make any difference you didn't understand what I was saying you misunderstood because I mispronounced some fucking fucktard's retarded name <laughs> you know, does it matter no it doesn't matter at all to anybody with a brain so again these arguments are just so useless you're saying you were confused somewhere you didn't get something somewhere you're finding this speech I'm saying right now where I'm kind of sloppy about exact pronunciation. You're saying you don't understand what I'm saying. It's it's over your head because uh, it's it's not perfect enough. The hieroglyphics aren't written perfectly enough. <laughs> You're such a piece of shit. All right, anyway, uh, how come you are defending all the crackpots like D. Hilsler? Well, I don't know where you get the idea of defending D. Hilsler or Unsucker. Where the hell? I mean, the only thing I um, defended about Unsucker is she implied the guy wasn't a physicist, and he is. Uh, but not Mudman Roger. I don't know anything about this Mudman stuff. So again, they want to just say, I could just make up any creationist name. So um, Jerry Falwell's dead, but I just call you a Falwellian, okay? Is, is that all I have to do? You know, you're just a, a creationist nut, a religious kook. I just call you a Leibnizian. <laughs> That's good enough for me. All right. Um, hello, I watched your video on the main... <coughs> Man Mason, Mu Mason, but fine. And you can easily understand that the second pulse is coming from a decay by looking at the DT distribution. Okay, I don't know exactly what a DT distribution is. And the energy spectrum, but they didn't do any of that. 
they didn't even cite it in the TV presentation, right? So they did a half hour video on it. They didn't even talk about uh, creating some kind of filter. And so again, you have to understand the filter isn't something the photo detector is producing as information. And they had no way to discern it as any information. Okay, the only thing they were doing was amplifying the magnitude of a visual photon. And that's it. There's no detectors involved in any way. So to say it and to do it are two different things. So I read the actual paper, and the paper does talk about making this detector but it's not in the experiment anywhere. So if you read the paper, it isn't talked about in the paper, how they made these differentiations or the fact that they did make the differentiations. So the fact is they didn't do it. They didn't use it. If, if they talked about a detector, they didn't use one. And I don't see how it's possible for there to be one because the photomultiplier can't provide that information. The photomultiplier is an on-off device. It just says on at this magnitude. It's, it's electron voltage. It just says on. Here's how much more voltage there is. There's this much electron volt, period. That's it. That's all you get. On an amount of voltage. There's no, what color is it? There's no, <laughs> there's no other nuance. So what are you talking about? I can reference some papers if you like. Yes, we'll reference a paper that has this actual experiment done with any kind of potential detector and then I'm going to argue again this is like the the LIGO thing right you want to convince me that LIGO works well then put a mass over the top of the tunnel and just swing it back and forth and show me that your mirror picked it up it could see it and just show me it doing it with a smaller and smaller mass <laughs> show it hey look that we can detect that no problem all right, and the same thing I could argue with this muon experiment. Why don't you just put more bricks until you only get one muon per 10 minutes, you know, so six an hour. Then you're assured that you're never going to confuse a decay, you know, no, not assured, but you can uh, uh, believe that most 90% of your muons will not be corrupted by a second muon entering the scintillator. But even your whole argument, I mean, can't you even smell how stupid it is the whole way they describe muons as decaying? They're not decaying, they're running out of energy. A muon is a, an electron being pushed by a gamma ray, essentially. And all it does is run out of energy. It doesn't decay, okay? It's not an atom, it's not a big giant object. It's a little object. It might even be two electrons pushed into each other. And all you're saying is it's one of the electrons that's going really fast, pushing the other <laughs> electron, and there's a point where it starts going slow enough where it can be broken into pieces. That's it. It's, it's, it's not radioactive. It doesn't have a, a half-life. <laughs> you know, it's just nonsense. It has a capacity to push. Um, it has a velocity and a momentum. And you can push it through... Uh, a scintillator, for example, or lead, or steel bricks, or atmosphere, and it eventually will be, um, it, its energy will be absorbed because it's going to hit particles and give its momentum away to the bowling pins, so to speak. It's going to hit objects and give its momentum to the objects. And that simple explanation works. But anyway, so go ahead. Um, but if you're going to reference a paper, you have to quote from it, okay? So quote the part where they prove or demonstrate that the information they're getting from the photomultiplier can tell the difference between a decay photon and a non-decay photon. Because they concede in their argument. I mean, you know, I don't want to have to explain all of this stuff. The scintillator is a volume, and their detector is in one location, right? So if... The, the, the muon creates a, a photon out, you know, it hits something over here. The energy has to travel a very long distance, okay, and it's going to be duller, less, less, you know, inverse square law. The photon is going to be weaker. The light isn't going to be as bright coming from that photon and uh, as if it was a closer event. So if it was closer, they're going to see it sooner and they're going to see it brighter. 
All right, so that's the simple argument. So how could you tell the difference? Say if you said the decay events were 50% um, less magnitude to the photon, which in a way doesn't make sense either because it's supposed to be a photon, right? It's almost like the photon should never be anything but one energy level. Uh, but anyway, let's just play with the game. Um, how would you be able to tell a distant entering muon from a close, a very close decay? You couldn't tell the difference. So it's just bullshit. I mean, frankly, you got to take it's a half hour video. You think, you know, they filmed. You think if they had some point to make about how they were doing the experiment, they would have made the point and said, no, we're not doing it the way we're showing you. Why would they show it wrong when there's going to take a half hour to do the video? I mean, there's a lot of waste in there, you know, showing the truck driving, doing, you know, <laughs> there's lots of opportunity in there for the to take 30 seconds to say, oh, it's not as simple as what we're saying here. You know, we actually have it going through a detector that can tell the difference between decay photons and new muons. We have a detector that can tell the difference. There's no evidence they, can't. they had a detector that could tell the difference. But thank you for at least being on the subject. Angela Collier uses angular momentum to describe galactic mechanics. So what? Angular momentum is momentum. Do you understand? It's not angular kinetic energy. It's angular momentum. And the point is, is does, does Angela understand? Okay, so, so you know, I've made the video on it, but I'll do this. I'll do it again just because it is an, an interesting argument to make. Okay, so I've made one video on this subject. And I should probably, I'll put that on the debate website. Um, just because it is an interesting subject I haven't spent much time on. Um, <clears throat> but I wonder, you know, we don't get the, you know, I, I guess I could try to find a paper of hers if she has one published somewhere. Um, <clears throat> you know, but it's all such convoluted stuff. You know, they're not just doing something simple like saying, okay, here's a galaxy. We're going to figure out what speed it's rotating here compared to what speed it's rotating here. Okay, and if you look at galaxies, you know, they do come in two flavors. Some of them have a very bright center, you know, and some of them it almost looks like a hurricane, like it's the eye of the storm. It almost looks like you could look right through the damn galaxy in the center. You know, and then you have these big, thick army things flying off here, right? Okay, big swirly arm things. All right. And so the question is, so the point I have made is that... <laughs> You can't view this as a solar system, like here's Mercury, here's the Earth, uh, I mean Venus, and here's the Earth, and here's Mars, and you know the big planets, and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not a solar system. It's not something with no matter in it. This has a lot of matter in this outside part. So the simple truth is, is if you were to penetrate it, it's like penetrating the Earth. What happens when you penetrate into the Earth is that the gravity gets weaker, because the counter gravity, you know what I'm saying? So the fact is you have a lots of stuff, you know, pulling you. <clears throat> so the further you go inside of an object that's solid, you know, gravitational objects. So if I go inside the earth, I penetrate the earth and I'm at this point. So here's the center. Okay. And I'm getting close to the center, but I'm not there yet. The fact is, is that this stuff is pulling you this way. All right, and this stuff is pulling you this way, and there is still now more stuff pulling you this way than that way, but it's very weak, right? So instead of 9.8 meters per second gravity here, it's like 1.2 meters per second of gravity. So it's very low gravity here, not very high, and that's the difference between the solar system. The solar system, the sun-centered solar system, is basically saying that the gravity here is you know 100 meters per second and the gravity here is 9.8 and the gravity out here is you know minuscule so it's exactly the opposite as you go inside a material that has matter in it a thickness of matter when you go inside of one of these arms the gravity is going way down because you have a bunch of mass pulling you out so it reduces the gravity, which means your velocity has to be reduced. This velocity in here has to go way down 
So compared to Mercury, which needs a high velocity to stay at without, you know, not falling into the sun, it has to be moving really fast not to fall into the sun. Well, this doesn't have to move, it can't move fast. If it moves fast, it flies out of the galaxy. So it has to go much, much, much slower than Mercury's going. So your comparison between the Earth and Mercury is very different than your comparison between in here and here, or here at the surface of the galaxy. So if you're going to compare the speeds, you would have every expectation that this speed would be very similar to this speed. Because the fact is, the gravity is getting less in here, not more. It's not stronger gravity. It's getting weaker as it goes in and needs less velocity. And so that's why this looks faster, is because this is a lot slower. Okay. I wonder if she knows that. I wonder if she's considered that fact with her expertise, her doctorate in studying swirly things. I wonder if her doctorate in studying swirly things, um, whether she um, realizes, oh yeah, that's true. Galaxies are like, they're like going inside the sun because in a way the galaxy is a bunch of atoms. It's a, it's a substance. I mean, the sun is incredibly undense compared to the earth. You know, uh, <laughs> a half a million times less dense or something. Uh, you know, a million times bigger, but a uh, half a million times lighter. Uh, and the galaxy is even lighter, but it's flat. You know. So anyway. So, so it's, it's, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I wonder how much she knows even about ga what she's supposed to be an expert in. I wonder how much of an expert she really is. All right. Um, so next, uh, where are you debating Dr. Castro? So apparently Castro is some, he yeah, apparently is a physicist of some kind. Now he goes to those de Hilster things and defends relativity theory. So I don't find that terribly interesting. <laughs> um, but he's, he's always fucking with his backgrounds. <laughs> you know, he's, he's doing the blue screen, green screen thing. He's trying to hide his actual location. So you're saying, what, what you're living in your mother's basement? You know, what's, what's the catch? You know, it all seems a little bit uh, hokey-fokey. <laughs> yeah, I don't buy it. All right, um, you sound fucking unhinged and, and psycho. So I could say that to every single person on the Internet. Meaningless mush. So again, whoever you are, I'm just letting you know, these are the kind of comments where eventually I just say, okay, I'm just going to block your IP, all right, from the website entirely. So if that's what you're interested in having me do, then just keep typing shit like that. Useless, useless garbage. Any two-year-old can type that kind of mush. Hello, did you check out the paper showing one half V M square V squared? I, I mean, so this is kind of fine, right? So I'll show you the the papers. So he, he cites three papers. So this will get you blocked eventually, too, if you're just going to waste my time. Now, one of the papers is entirely just math. So there's no actual physical experiment. And the other two papers have to do with com one, one's of Compton scattering, and the other one is some sort of muon, gluon, quirky thing, you know. So obviously this doesn't have anything to do with anything physical. These aren't papers showing anything to do with transferring momentum. This doesn't have anything to do with anything real. So fuck you. Okay, these aren't proofs. You're not, you're not showing me the, you know, the 50 mile an hour car crash and the 100 mile an hour car crash. And you're not showing me the 100 mile an hour car crash doing four times the damage. Or the, the, you know, we could use the bigger exaggeration, the 10 mile an hour and the 50 mile an hour, and you're not showing me the 25 times the damage. All right, that's the only proof I'm interested in, is some sort of real evidence. Show me a 5 mass going 10 velocity and a 10 mass going 5 velocity, and show me the tug of war between those two. Show me that experiment. Otherwise, just go to hell. <laughs> All right, yeah, so fuck you. And he types it three times for whatever reason. Uh, hey, fat ass. See, I mean, this doesn't even mean anything. <laughs> you know, compared to who is my ass fat? Uh, when are you playing Dr. Collier? What? Paying? Why would I pay? I, I, you know, I, I frankly did offer her, but we don't know what her price is, okay? So, 
but I did make the offer. So if she comes across and tells us how much to pay her, well, then I'll pay her. I'll pay her for an hour. I'll pay her for two hours. I'll pay her for five minutes. Whatever she's willing to give, okay? But there's no response from her. So why are you asking me? Why don't you ask her fat ass? When are you going to tell us how much you cost per hour to make an argument? How much does a crank, a, a what does she call them? <laughs> what does she call them? Whatever, uh, you know. Uh, uh, how many of them have offered to pay her for her time? And how many times has she refused? So she gets whatever she said, 50 email, emails a year. And um, how many of them have offered to pay her for her time? And did she allow any of them to pay her for her time? Okay, why do you skip it? Skip it the commercials. I don't know. Why do you skip it, the commercials? We want to watch you watch commercials. Well, I don't care what you want. Ha ha, time for the public meltdown. Whatever that is. I think your description of Dr. Color's thesis is about as retarded as your description of Dr. Castro's thesis. Where's Dr. Castro's thesis? Where did I even argue it? But I'm sure it is crap. <laughs> so... So what, where, is it, where, where is this something on the subject? How does this have anything to do with the fact that they haven't substantiated any of the crap they're arguing? They haven't proven cl atomic clocks aren't breakable. They ha certainly haven't redone the Eddington experiment. Um, you know, they certainly haven't shown us any twin paradox thing. They certainly haven't showed how biological metabolism slows down with velocity. <laughs> you know, they haven't shown any of this shit. Uh, anyway, when are you going to add Angela Banner to your videos? Well, I already added her to the shameful, disgraceful jackasses of uh, science. So she's got her page now. I think Angela Collier is ignoring you. Um, no, she, she's deliberately deleted my link. So she's basically saying, you people, okay, you have counter arguments. I won't even allow you to be included as being part of this universe, okay? Your arguments are not allowed. And that was a polite video, Just I'm just saying. I mean, there was nothing about the first video that somebody could argue would be, uh, um, you know, making any hard or uh, mean accusations beyond just saying, I disagree. So when are you going to make your next Angela Kohler? So, uh, I already made three now, but I'll I'll make some more. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, when you adding banner about Angela? So I already did that. Are you going to run it at the top of the videos or just have it run over the physicist Michael? No, I, I think I'm just going to leave that the way it is for now. I mean, physicist Michael is still on the hook because he actually did respond. So let's understand. He engaged in the conversation. He has defended... Ian Gosling's bullshit experiments. He's he's stuck his nose out, and now he's sit there and he's contended he's going to show us this uh, Newton's cradle creating free momentum. All right, so he said he's going to do the experiment. Uh, so far, he can't get it to work. That's the fact. All right, it's not going his way. That's why we haven't seen it yet because it isn't working. Do you think it tipping over or wobbling would be an issue if it was coming out his way? Of course it wouldn't be an issue. It's only an issue because it isn't fucking working. All right, He's not getting the answer he wants to sell. He hasn't figured out a way to stick clay on the little balls yet. <laughs> yeah. Answer to the question below. He doesn't know how. He doesn't support his hypothesis. It is easier to use intuition. So whatever that is. Uh, so when are you adding a section about Angela? I already did. Okay. Uh, why is it you don't analyze data? So again, what is the data? Where is this analyzed, this data that needs analyzing? I mean, you're just so pathetic. Hey, fat ass again. Whatever. Compared to who? When are you paying physicist Michael? Again, he's another guy. I asked him, how much do I have to pay you? Fart face, uh, butt shit. Um, you know, how much? So yeah, let's be enemies. That's fine. Uh, you're complaining that you don't need to argue my arguments. Well, I'll pay you to argue them. So then how do you lose? You're getting paid. 
okay it's a job you can earn your money uh, and you can have the fun of debunking me and get paid to do it so why don't you show up and tell me what it is I gotta pay you how much is your time worth <laughs> you know uh, yeah, well, whatever. I, you know, I mean, he's a physics professor in some, you know, in some shack some university has in the middle of nowhere where they give out beautician degrees, you know. This is hilarious. Sorry if you don't want to hear from me. Okay, this is Tyler. Yes, Tyler, just fuck off. I mean, you cannot do this. I'm a physicist. I read a Wikipedia page yesterday. I mean, that really is ridiculous. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He has a whole thing in here about, you know, you know, this is where the physics, you know, just so distorts everything. He's talking about the editing experiment. He's talking about seeing an object behind the sun. That's only talk, Tyler, okay? They didn't do that experiment, okay? The object they looked at was way far away from the sun. It wasn't behind the sun. It was way far away from the sun. But you have to get out of the sun's corona, you moron. All right, and they saw it move just a tiny little, tiny, tiny little difference in its position. Tiny, tiny, tiny little difference. Okay, so it wasn't. They didn't see anything from behind the sun. None of that happened. You fucktard. Oh god damn. So again, he just you know. He obviously, just, well, forget it. He's just, he's just, he's just a, an, a complete asshole. Thinks he knows everything because he saw a TV commercial about it. I mean, it's pathetic. Um, let's see. Can you start showing more of your retarded simulations? So, again, the simulation works really well. And that's the best you can do. That's your counter argument. I mean, it duplicates charge perfectly, and that's the best you have as a counter argument. No, that isn't very good. <laughs> okay. So these are the papers, right? The theoretical and experimental study of the motion. Uh, so it's redirected from something else. Okay. So I mean, these papers are have absolutely nothing to do with momentum in any rational context. All right, so we'll go find one of these. Uh, so, paste and enter, just to prove the point. All right, study the conservation of mechanical energy in the motion of a pendulum using a smartphone. So this one was even dumber. Because the smartphones aren't hitting each other. They're not banging into each other. There's no conservation of momentum. It's just swinging back and forth. And they're using the sensor on the phone to measure the back and forth motion. See, the phone just moves back and forth. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't, there's no collisions. There's no conservation of momentum beyond the regular pendulum's conservation of momentum. This is what they're talking about. It swings back and forth. So there's absolutely nothing useful here. It has nothing to do with collision data. Nothing at all. So, I mean, it's just, what the fuck? So you're going to tell me I should waste my time reading these papers when you haven't even read them, you fucking cunt. You're just going on the Internet saying, well, this says something about mechanical energy and it says something about conservation. Therefore, it's relevant. No, it isn't. So just am amazing. And the fact is the data sucks, which is funny. I mean, it's it's really shitty looking data, you know, for this idea of selling that the the cell phone works. I mean, it's a terribly jittery, cruddy line, so it doesn't give you very precise. OK, and this is a very slow pendulum. OK, this isn't even close to something fast. So the accelerometer in your cell phone is not going to be a great measuring device. It's just too ridiculous. All right. But there's no collisions. So I just, you're just like, oh, I mean, can't you people, can't you do any honest work ever? Okay. All right. So I think we've done this. Why is your web page all fucked in the in and shitty? Because I like it that way. That's why. Yeah. Simple enough answer. I think it's just fine. Quite readable, quite viewable, blah, 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 blah. So fuck you and such. All right, so enough of the video. But, oh, these people are just so pathetic. So tiresome. To live on a planet with just such... 
You have such deplorably poor, dishonest humans. I mean, you're just so you're so dishonest to think that I should have to, you know, that you've made some counter argument. <laughs> yeah. Your simulation sucks. Oh, you mean it perfectly duplicates charge, but it sucks? Uh, I mean, you can't even come close to being a little bit honest, right? Just a little bit honest? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't know what the honest reply would be, right? Except they could say, well, duplicating charge is no big deal. We do it all the time. Well, oh, no, we don't really. Okay, so yeah, our physics doesn't have any idea how charge works. We don't have a single mechanism. We just say it's woo. Electrons magically repel each other and protons magically repel each other and protons magically attract electrons. And that's all you have is a theory. Amazing bullshit. Nah, I just get the hell out of here. Ah, and the stench of you people is insufferable. The human, the, the outhouse earth. <laughs> that's all this is. This is the just a shithole. A hole for shit.